What's going on guys? Uh, today what I'm going to show you how to do is make a PBR texture like this, where it has three depth and everything, and it reacts to light properly, from just a simple image that I got off Google. So I just got this off Google somewhere. It's recommended to use a high quality, high res image, um, but this is, li this is literally just off Google. It has no normal maps or anything um, initially. It does now, and I'm going to show you how to get all those maps, height, and everything from it. So to do that, we actually need a program, and I'm going to link it in the description for you. It's free, it's open source, it's called uh, Materialize. And uh, so I've gone ahead and I've set up my base color, the image I got off Google, which is this bricks. And what you do is you just click this little O button and go to wherever your texture is. Just click on it and click select. It'll open it up. So now, now this isn't PBR yet, as you can tell. Um, this is not PBR. It's just a standard image. So we're going to go and create that. So you basically just go through each of these maps and click create. Um, now, by default, the settings might be different. So we could choose, so like by default, it probably would look like this. And so if we just click this, it's going to show the white. The white because it's a mask. And what that means is whatever is white is displaced and whatever is black is not. It's inset. So what we're going to do, is we are going to clear that, and we're going to invert the mask. So we're going to click Use Color Sample 1 and Use Color Sample 2. And then we're going to drag, we're going to drag the, I, we're going to put on Isolate Mask. And now, as you can see, actually we probably don't even need Color Sample 2. Now what you can see is the bricks are the ones that are going to be offset. So if we click this, now the bricks are offset. And you can adjust this, uh, this amount as much as you want with the, if we go back to create, it'll save the settings every time you click create, so don't worry about losing your settings. Uh, but you can change it with like the contrast and stuff and the gain and all that. Um, and you can also add like presets that like overlay on top if you want. But I'm just going to use the ones I created. So we have our height map. Now this is brick, so we don't need metallic or, or smoothness. Um, they're already pretty, pretty rough. We could probably make a smoothness map if we wanted to. But for this, I'm going to do default for the normal map. And you can adjust the final contrast and stuff if you want. But I'm just going to do this. This looks pretty good to me. Um, and then we'll create an ambient occlusion map. And what an ambient occlusion map does is it will add in shadows to the areas where it should be. So that way you always have shadows um, where it should be. And what PBR does, PBR is physically based rendering. What it does, if you're not familiar with it, is it basically tells the material how to react to light based on the angle it's at. Okay, so now that we have that, all we're going to do is we're going to click Tile Maps. This is going to make it tileable automatically for us, which is amazing. And we're going to set the maps. It's going to be 248 resolu 2048 resolution, so 2K. You can do 5, 12, 10, 24 or 4K. So we're just going to do that. We've got a tileable map here now. Okay. Whenever you're ready, just go ahead and click Save Project and save it to whatever folder you want. You'll have to name it like T Bricks or, or whatever you want to name your texture because this can be used for literally any texture. It doesn't have to be bricks. Um, just whatever image you have, plop it in here. You can create PBR materials from it. It's a really cool program. So now that we're back, now that we have that, we're going to go back in Unreal. And we're going to drag, I've already um, done this, so I've already dragged it in here. So we're going to drag our, all of our um, images into here. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to create a material. Just right click, material, name it what you want, open it up. Okay, now I'm not going to actually go through the process of creating a material, because that's pretty simple. What I'm going to go over is how to make it um, 3D like this, and how to input the maps into it. Okay, so I already made it, and so I'm going to go over what each of these things does. So this is the defuse. This is just the base texture you got off Google. This is the normal created, and this is the ambient occlusion. If you have metallic and specular, you would put this in here. But uh, that's just how to make PBR. So if we just take that out, um, you've already got like a super high-res texture. It just doesn't have that 3D effect. So if we go back out here, you've got the blot, you've got the light reaction and everything. So if that's all you need, then you can stop this video. But if you want the 3D effect on a cube without having to do tessellation on like a cube and stuff, then um, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So this is what's called parallax occlusion mapping. Um, basically, what it does is it's like a camera trick. 
it'll fake 3D based on the camera's location. Um, and this is built into the engines. You don't have to code it in Blueprints or C++ or anything. It's just built into the engine with the materials. So, as you may have noticed, we have these three maps, but we also had a height map. It's uh, right here. This is the height map. It's a red and, it's a red and, um, or not red. There's RGB and there's red and then there's black and white pictures. So it's like a layout with black and white. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up how to use that height map to make it look 3D. Okay, so go ahead and type in parallax, para, parallax occlusion mapping, sorry about that. Just type this in, now you're gonna get this node here. Now I'm gonna go over what each of these do, each of these does and what you need to put in there. So for the height map texture, by default, you're gonna have a texture sample like this, okay? And you are going to, so it's gonna look like this. So in order to, because you can't just connect it to here because they're not compatible. So what you need to do is you need to right click this, click convert to texture object, and now you can do it. Um, so now the other settings here, okay, is we have the height ratio, which is how much it's gonna look like it displaced. So if we crank this up to like 0 0.1, Right, you're going to see a lot of displacement, but it's going to inset a bit. So you want to be careful doing this because this is still a flat texture. There's no actual extra geometry, so it could look weird. So Epic recommends some point between 0 0.1 and 0 0.05. Um, I like to do like 0 0.35 because it's like in between what they recommend, and that's how I get this effect. Now it's not going to look too weird, um, no matter where the player is. It's not going to like have glitches and stuff. Okay, so now the min steps and the max steps, these are just quality settings. You can, um, you can convert these parameters like a material instance, and then you can set those in your settings for the game. So if you wanna like have like a low quality for parallax occlusion mapping, you put like one in this to like five or something. Um, I'm not too sure how that would change it, but it's just gonna lower the resolution of it. You'll still have it, but it'll lower the resolution of it. Um, I keep it at 16 or 32, but that's for a settings menu option if you want to have a toggle for it. Okay, now the UVs, this part right here is, I'm using a texture coordinate. This is to tile it. However, anything that you would normally put in here, like panner or other effects, uh, that goes in here. Because the UVs for the textures are done through the parallax, if that, if that makes sense. So you basically, it's like a feed through. So it feeds the UV stuff through here to all of these. Okay, now the height map channel, this one's actually pretty important. Uh, what I do is I click four on my keyboard, I hold it down and I left click, and it gives me what's called a texture coordinate four. And what this does is the, is the best way to explain it is if we go back to our height image, right? Remember how I showed you these RGB? If we click on each one, so let's say we show B, we'll see this. Now this could work. But if we show G and R, R and B, they'll like the colors will change. So basically, you want to pick one of these channels, and it could be either, really any of them with this texture. But sometimes it's on other textures that may not be it. For this texture, um, you can use any of them. I'm using R, so that's why I put a red color here, because I'm saying, hey, use the R channel on the texture and only that one. And so it's saying, okay, I'm just gonna use the R texture. And the reason we do that is the texture object doesn't have these outputs. So we have to tell it with the texture coordinate. Okay, so now the only other thing you have to really do is get what's called a sky atmosphere light direction. Sky atmosphere, I'm gonna type in sky atmosphere light direction and it'll pop up. Now this will take the uh, sky that you have up here and take the light from it and auto calculate where the light should bounce. Okay, and once you have that set up, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want, you can do things like pixel depth offset, which what that will do is if a, it looks kind of weird and like shadows on itself, but what that will do is if like a sphere, like let me, let me show you here real quick. Okay, so it looks fine in game, but if we go and do it like a sphere, and this should work here, okay. As you can see, the, the sphere will like go in with the inset. So if we take this off, if we take off the pixel depth, the sphere is just gonna clip through and it's not gonna clip through the depth, as you can see. It'll just clip through as it is. So turning on pixel depth offset 
gives it that 3D feel with other meshes in the game. And that's that's pretty important if you want to do um, other effects. So that is pretty much it. Um, there's some things you can do with Shadow. Like you can add Shadow. I, I mean, Shadow's already there, so I don't even work with it. But you can do a, a linear interpolate, and you can put this in a base color shadow and then put like a const or er, yeah constant in there and just put it at like 0 0.3 or 0 0.5 and that'll uh, add a little bit of darkness to it should it work no it's not working let me try something here let me do and then we'll we'll do a, a color so now I should uh, it's not working. Does that work better? I think that works a little bit better. Yeah, so you want to put it in the A. So the color goes in the A and the texture goes in the B. And this will fake shadows on it, on the depth. So the darker we go, the more shadows we'll see. Okay, so that's basically it. That's how you get PBR textures with 3D effects. Um, just remember, this is just a cube. This is not tessellated or anything. So it's, it's, it's a very good way of faking tessellation. And this is really good on landscapes because Unreal Engine 5 does not support tessellation on landscapes anymore or really in any material. You can fake it on a mesh with modeling tools and stuff, but this is, this is what AAA games use because it doesn't have polygons and keeps the same effect. All right, thank you for watching. Um, I do have plugins on the Unreal Marketplace that I want to show you real quick before the video ends. Uh, just as a shameless plug, uh, basically they they do different things like DLC achievements, um, simplifying damage, camera animations, uh, optimized crowds, easy shooting, stuff like that. Um, so if you want to check those out, you can. They're linked in the description. But have a good one. Uh, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'll make more like it. Thank you.